hello and welcome everyone so in this video we'll be continuing from where we left off we have created all of our classes in c and now we're going to actually start programming the functions inside of c and then just move to blueprints but before we begin programming i want to point out one thing that if you have named your project something other than gas replication you should be careful while copying and pasting the code from the source so for example i have this project gas replication over here and you see this is the name gas replication that's the project's name and then api i have a similar project that i named gas rep as you can see in the path over here and the macro that is created is called gas rep according to the name of the project and then the api word so if you follow from the source code for example and if you go over to the same creator class over here just remember that when you are copying and pasting don't copy and paste unnecessary things like this and just copy all of these header files like this is also a header file that you should not copy it's generated according to your class name and that kind of things so just be careful when you are copying the code like this okay so open up your read studio and if you don't already have this open what you want to do is just go to your c++ classes folder and open up this gas character and it's going to open up inside of your read studio or you could navigate to like this go to public and you have this gas header file okay so open this up and this time i'm not going to be typing live code on the video and rather i'll just copy and paste it from my source control so that it's easier for you to understand you can do the same so first of all what you want to do is just add a few header files and they're going to be ability system interface and gameplay effects types okay and then what you want to do is just forward declare a few classes so just below the header file i'm going to forward declare these two classes gameplay ability system component and attribute set next what you want to do is just below this line i'm going to paste all of these codes so mm -hmm. This is quite a long code, so I'll just explain this instead of typing this. So what you want to do is just save this and we'll start by first function to the last function. Okay, so this tick and set a player in input component are provided to us by the engine by default. We are not going to change this. this. The tick function is like the tick function inside of the blueprints. It's called every frame. And so we'll start from this line and this is our ability system component variable. So this is going to be placed on our character like a component that we're going to access to modify attribute set, apply gameplay effects and activate abilities like that. And then we have this um, attribute set that we're going to be using for our character. I just named this attribute set var for variable. And then we have this variable for our initial abilities so when we start a game, we're going to have a few abilities. For example, the Gideon had that uh, projectile ability, the basic attack ability. So we're going to, need to use this variable to initialize these abilities. And then we have this function get ability system component that has to be present on any character, regardless uh, what you're going to use custom ability system component or the default one. We need to have this interface that's going to return us the our system component of the actor and also we have declared these few functions that are going to exist inside of c plus plus and that are going to call be called when we have our attributes change we'll be creating the attributes further on in this video but uh, for now just know that these functions will be called when whenever the attributes have changed for example this one will be called when our health changes this one will be cha called on mana change and this one will be called on base attack damage and this one on speed multiplier change okay and then these functions are the exact blueprint variants of these functions okay so once this function is called from c++ this is going to trigger this function inside of the blueprints and these functions will not have an implementation inside of c++ rather we're going to implement these inside of our blueprints okay and now I've commented this code and 
this is another way of implementing these change events on your character but i'll not be using these these are the default sort of default ones that are provided by the unreal engine you might want to go for these if you want to but i'll be sticking to my custom uh, attribute change delegates and events okay and this function is used to initialize an ability by initialize i mean you have the ability system component but ability system does not automatically get your abilities rather you have to initialize them and tell the ability system component that hey this character has these abilities okay you can initialize them only on server you should not initialize abilities on client okay and this function initialize ability multi this is used to initialize an array of abilities rather than just a single ability Okay, so these are also exposed to our blueprints in case you want to call these. And these two functions are present inside C++ only. Once on possessed by this function is called on the server and on wrap player state is called on the client. Once you have started your play and character is being possessed by a controller. Okay. Next we have these functions that are used to um, get the values for our attributes like for example I just want to know what is the health of my character or the max health of my character so I'm going to call this function to get these values and they are really useful functions for example like if you want to display these values on the user interface or some gauges and progress bars and that kind of thing so it's easier to visualize these values by using these functions you should not directly call this um, visit this attributes are variable and just drag out values from there rather use these getter functions inside of your project okay and then we have these functions some helper function that are allow us to modify change remove our ability so this one remove ability tags is used to remove an ability that is already present on your gameplay ability system component okay so just provide a tag and for example if you want to remove your mana ultimate ability you can just call this to remove that ability from your ability system component and it will no longer activate on your input keys okay and next we have this change ability level with tag so for example if you want to level up an ability you can call this function to change the level by level you can just like for example decrease the mana cost for an activation of an ability or something like that and cancelability with tag is used to cancel an ongoing ability that is currently running on a character for example you have an ability like infinite jump or flying and you want to cancel that ability for some reason so you can call this function and then just cancel that ability by providing the tag for the ability and these last two functions add loose gameplay tag and remove loose gameplay tag are used to add gameplay tags to your ability system component now remember these that these are called loose tags because you have to take care of them them yourself the gameplay effects also apply gameplay tags to the ability system component but they take care of them inside of the gameplay effects and for the loose tags you have to use these functions and manage them very carefully yourself and uh, i think i forgot one thing yes you have to also inherit this class from this uh, i ability system interface okay so our character also has this interface function so once this is done what you want to do is move to the cpp file of this gas character.h so you could go to private and just select this gas character.cpp or what you could do is go to your gas character and assuming you have your default key for shortcut just hold down control and press k and o okay so this is a handy shortcut to move between the header file and the source file okay so inside of our cpp file what you want to do is inside of your constructor what you want to do is just add these lines so we have initialized our system component with the default object and we have set the replication mode of that component to true and we are going to go with minimal and uh, there are a few options for this so what you're going to do is let's see if i can get them so there is one full 
and there is one called mixed so you generally don't want to go for full inside of the um, multiplayer game for the optimization of the network but uh, you should stick with minimal or mixed for the multiplayer game for a single player game you can get away with full so in this example I'll be using just this minimal mode of this replication and oh I totally forgot to add our header files so you have to add these gas attribute set and gas able system component header files okay and inside of our begin play we're going to add this line of code so first what you can do is tell our ability system component that this is your attribute set variable you're going to act upon this variables for your gameplay effects okay and these functions are the bindings or the delegates that are going to handle our health change mana change base attack change and speed multiplier change okay these functions are going to be called uh, when our, our attribute changes okay uh, now this is the old mention that I mentioned inside of my header file um, this one if you want to use these functions you have to use this type of binding for your attribute set delegate functions but I'll be sticking to my own implementation of this yes it is present just here if you want to use this method okay and next we are not going to do anything inside of tick and we are going to, not going to do anything inside of setup player input component rather we are going to just directly move and implement our the rest of the functions okay so we'll start from the beginning um, over here so for the function get ability system component we are just simply going to return our ability system component that we have initialized over here okay on health change initially, we are just simply going to call the blueprint version of our health change you could what do over here is like tackle the full health or like if the health is zero you can call something like player is dead and that sort of stuff you would do that over here if you wanted to do in C++ or you could do it on inside of the blueprints by calling this function inside of blueprint on health change similarly we have our functions for mana change base attack damage change and speed multiplier change and this is the old implementation or the default implementation that is provided by the Unreal Engine so I have left it over here if you want to use this just uncomment this and you'll be good to go but just as a fair warning you should not definitely not mix these two types of implementation okay and moving on we have our initializability function so this first checks if we have our authority this is only present on the server and not on the client and then we check if we have our valid ability system component if this is true then we give the ability that is given by to us by this ability to get variable and we initialize it at this ability level so this can be called from blueprint and we'll see how we initialize these abilities using blueprints okay and then we have this initialize ability multi this is going to take an array of these abilities to acquire and then then call this function again to initialize these abilities on this given level okay it's using for loop to iterate through these variables of this array of abilities and then initializing them one by one okay then we have this possessed by function this is called on the um, server so first of all we call the super function super function is like the equivalent of add call to parent function inside of blueprints you can say so it calls the parent class for this function and then we do is set the ability actor input to this and this by this and this i mean first one is the actor that is the owner of this ability system component and the second one is the avatar actor of this ability system component so the original owner could be a player controller and the avatar actor would be like the display actor the character itself that is present inside of the world this ability system component distinguishes between these two type of characters so but we do not have a separate character for display and separate character for controller so i'll be using this character for both of these 
and then we call the initializability multifunction and initialize our initial abilities at a level of zero okay and this is a function that is called upon the client side of the character so i call the super function and then i just call this initialize ability actor info i do not give the abilities on the client i just give the abilities on the server okay so just remember this difference between client and server this is slightly different from single player games that i did in my previous series so just keep this in mind okay next we have these uh, getter functions for our values so i have this attributes are variable get health value get max health value and mana base attack damage and speed multiplier so we can call this function inside of blueprint and get these values directly from these functions okay and then we have these helper functions remove game playability with tags we pass it the tag container and it's going to find our matching abilities with these tags and then just clear those abilities that pass this matching ability tags okay and similarly we have this change ability level with tag this is going to also take a tag container and the new level that we want the ability to be so it's also going to scan through these abilities on our ability system component and if it finds a match it's going to change the level of that ability to this new level okay similarly we have this cancelability with tags so we're going to pass this tag and if it does not have this tag we can also cancel them with like that so we just call that function on the our ability system component and lastly we have this function add loose gameplay tag and remove loose gameplay tag okay so we get our build system component and add that tag to that and on this line what i'm doing is just manually setting that tag to one because tags can be stacking like you can have multiple copies of the same tag on the build system component but just to keep things simple i have manually set that tag to one because once we are removing this tag we have to remember how many tags we have stacked upon our ability system component so in this case it's only going to be one so i just call it the function simply remove loose gameplay tag okay so this is it for our character class and next what we're going to do is move to our uh, attribute set and i think this video is pretty long so we'll just continue from here in the next video so this is it for this video thank you very much